Today was the final round of the 2014 St. Louis Invitational, an event that was the most fruitful of its kind in the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis's history. Three players left St. Louis very happy. Sevian completed his climb to six and a half points with a final round draw against Raja Panjwani. I want to say thanks to the organizers and for organizing this tournament and um, it's really hard for norm seekers to play in the U.S. We have to go overseas and it's really nice that we get to play this tournament here. He didn't really know what to do. I mean, he was thinking of playing e5 with the idea of f6 to uh, gain some space, but I think after just queen c2, followed by knight d2, knight e4, then this d6 square is a bit weak. One of my knights can enter there, so um, he didn't want that to happen. He played h6. Now I just play bishop d2. If he does nothing, probably I'll play knight e5 or rook d1, again, bishop c1, d4. So he played b5, a takes b5, a b, knight c5, knight takes, knight takes, knight e7. He played knight e7 because if he goes knight f6, then I play knight c6, which is a fork, and he'll have to give away his light squared bishop. And, well, it's a bit better because I have two bishops. And if he plays f6 with the idea of e f ah, he can't play f6 here um, because of g6 is hanging. But just a nice idea would be knight c6, bishop c6, queen e6, and it's a fork. Um, knight e7, now I exchange these bishops. Technically, I'm probably a bit worse but because of this weak d3 pawn, but it should be holdable. Uh, queen e4, queen d5. I was looking at rook b6 with the idea of rook d6 to hit this d3 pawn. Uh, and I was looking at the line rook a7, rook d6, and bishop f4. Now I want to play knight takes f7 and bishop takes d6. So if g5, knight takes f7, rook takes bishop d6. Uh, here I can play rook a8, bishop d6, and I think white's a bit better. Um, and th the main point I think is if rook d5, then I have rook takes e7, queen takes e7, knight takes g6, which is a fork. And I have this move, and it's a pin, so I win a pawn. Uh, he played queen d5, exchanging queens, but now I think I'm fine. Rook a6. I want to play rook c6, so he stopped it with rook c8. And I mean, I don't think either side can pr progress here, so we made some moves. King g2, h5, bishop c1, knight b6. If c4, I take, take rook a4, and c4 is really weak, so he played knight b6 h4. I could sacrifice my knight but knight takes g6 and get three pawns. But I think that my pawns aren't too advanced and that I don't have good chances of holding this position after rook d7 or maybe rook d8. And d3 is really weak and if I play a move like rook d6, he can trade and play b4 and try to win a pawn on the queen side. So I played h4, he played rook a8. One funny perpetual was if he plays rook d8, Knight c6, rook takes d3, I play knight a5, rook b8, knight c6, and it's a draw. If he tries to avoid perpetual with rook d6, knight a5, rook d7, since now he's defending the knight with this rook, I have bishop f4, deflecting. So I played rook a, but now after knight f3 is just equal. I'm going to develop my final piece, and that's it. b4. If knight b6, then I simply play bishop b3. And then we trade and white's fine. B4, I put bishop e3 here. If he decides to take on c3 twice, then I put rook c1, attacking his bishop, and if he pins me, I just defend my bishop, and that's it. Uh, four versus four is a draw. Bishop f8, knight e5, knight b6. Now I just trade it into a drawn position, drawn rook ending. Uh, I could play a move like rook a1 here, or I could play under previous move rook a1, but I think after bc, bc, knight c7, it's going to be really hard to win this position. It's just too equal. Um, after knight e5, knight b6, I just traded into a rook ending. And here he offered me a draw because, I mean, after I capture, I attack this pawn, he'll take this, he'll take that. It's just four versus four in draw. 13-year-old Sam Sevian earned his second Grandmaster Norm, as well Caden Trofe left St. Louis with a rating over 2,500 
securing his spot as a bona fide Grandmaster. In the top tournament, Grandmaster Ben Feingold finished middle of the road. It was still good enough to earn him some money, however, and he was impressed with some of the players in this tournament. Seth Homa was very impressive. Um, I, also, I also thought Ron Burnett played pretty well. Uh, Seth Homa got seven out of nine. He was my student about eight years ago, and we worked for a couple of years together, so I was pretty happy about that. And Seth played really well. Seth's really solid. When I asked Seth with three rounds to go, what do you need for a norm? He said, I don't know. He just wanted to play chess, and he was just trying to play well. And he, he exceeded the norm by half a point. So he was the most impressive in the B group. In our second tournament, even though he only needed a draw to get his norm, FIDE master Seth Homa made sure he got the win in his game against Lavon Bergazzi to reach seven points. I had like zero expectations going into this one because um, I just came off the Chicago Open. So I spent the entire day in between events driving down here. I also caught a cold halfway through like apparently everybody else in this field did. And uh, so having zero expectations actually helped me like settle down and relax and just like take one game at a time and try to play the best move each move. I did two, queen of five. Um, I think during this entire game he was playing pretty quickly because he wanted to press me on the clock as well as on the board. But I can't help but feel like I got a really comfortable position in the early middle game here. And he tries to mix things up with a5, but I don't know whether that was, um, I don't know whether that's like best or not. But um, after b5, I was not expecting d5 at all. And now I was getting just a little bit worried because if I play something like e takes d5, then he gets like these two connected passers on the queen side after a7 drops. And if I try d4, takes, things like this I did not like. I think maybe now he can even just snap off on a7. Pretty mean past a pawn here. Um, other options, I sort of looked at knight e5. Wasn't sure what was going on after knight d4. Um, briefly looked at knight e7, briefly looked at knight b8. But taking on c4 seemed critical. He takes c6, b takes. Um, maybe White's play can be improved upon here. He was still moving quickly, which surprised me. Because I thought that was kind of critical. Rook takes c6, Russell takes a7. And knight d2, I thought I was pretty much okay here. I thought maybe you should have taken some more time on the previous moves because I thought that those were critical positions. Because while his past A pawn looks really, really scary, now my past B pawn has some protection, and there are some problems on the back rank for White. Uh, rook fd1, rook cd6. Now I have nasty threats of knight f3 check. Uh, rook dc1. And this might have been the decisive error because after queen f6, now I'm threatening b2, and there's like no way for him to get out of it really. Um, I looked at lines like bishop b6, b2, queen takes d6, but I can just take in the corner here. That's winning for white, uh, for black, sorry. Um, what were some other moves here? Rook d1, fails to knight f3, more back rank stuff. If Queen takes b6, this is nothing. I can block rook d8. That was important to see. So he played rook e1, but now I'm just winning after b2. If he plays um, rook b1, I could just grab. Back ring checkmate. Um, yeah, and if rook a d1, I just play knight f3 check and everything's crumbling here. So if he takes, then I can take d1. And not only is white down material, but I'm going to queen also. So this is pretty much, pretty much over for white. After his last game, Seth remarked that he did better in this tournament than all of his other St. Louis Norm events combined. And he earned it. Clear first in this tournament and the winner of a second International Master Norm. The 2014 St. Louis Invitational was by far the most fruitful of its kind that we've had here in terms of norms achieved and goals achieved. And we hope you join us again in another six months when we do it all again. 
For the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis, I'm Ben Simon. Mm -hmm.